this is Scott Nichols. I'm with Charity Benefits, and we're out here at the Surprise Barbecue Festival, and uh, we've brought high-end sports memorabilia to uh, a silent auction that we're having here to raise money for a very, very worthy cause for ovarian cancer. We're based out of Scottsdale. We provide the auction memorabilia at free of charge to any church, school, charity, organization, or foundation that would like to raise money for a worthy cause. So we've got a beautiful day. We're having a great barbecue, and we'd like to let the people from our Ovarian Cancer Foundation give you a little bit of word about what they're doing with the proceeds. Hi, I'm Melissa Ibach. I'm with the Ann Rita Monahan Foundation for Ovarian Cancer Research. We can be found at annritamonahan.org. And today we are the beneficiary of this event. Uh, we've underwritten the liquor license for the event as well. So come out and have a beer, get a whiskey, come bid on some great options here in the sports memorabilia, or sign up and let us know if you'd like to participate in any future events for ovarian cancer research. Thanks. All right, hey Barbecue TV, I'm Rick Phillips. I'm one of the event organizers of the Surprise Barbecue Festival. You're here with me right now in our Whiskey Expo. The Whiskey Expo is made up of over 35 different single malts, uh, bourbons, uh, scotches, Irish whiskey, American whiskey. We got it all in here. And we're going to have a lot of fun in here today with people sampling all this great product that we've gotten from all of our great uh, brands that have uh, participated in this today. Well, you know, what goes better with barbecue than bourbon? I guess beer and I guess baseball. Oh wait, that's our entire event. <laughs> it's a prize. So we needed to have bourbon and we started there and people love to sample this stuff. And we've got like from 25 year old Port Ellen and Talisker uh, single malts to some of the new products that have just come out, like the Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, the Red Stag from Jim Beam with their flavors. Of course, our event uh, sponsor today, Evan Williams, they've got uh, flavored whiskeys, which is a very big thing right now. So you can really find a little something for everybody, you know? We've got some really great old established ones like Balvini over here. And if you just go down the line, you know what? There's definitely something for everybody. You're behind the scenes. We're setting it up right now, getting ready hey to open there. the we're gates in a, a few minutes. We're at a barbecue contest today, and we're here with Pop Chips promoting our product. It's a chip that is not baked or fried. It's just with a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, and it's pop, you get a chip. And so we're giving out free samples to the public today who's come and just enjoying the day. You can find these at all local grocery stores, and sometimes if it's at Fry's or something, you might have to go to the organic section because they're all natural. There's no preservatives or additives, and so they're actually a lot better for you than the most average pop chip out there. In 1985, we had, I had never seen a barbecue cook-off in my life, and we happened up on a barbecue cook-off probably about nine cooks over in the Fort Worth Stockyards, Fort Worth, Texas. And I said, that looks like fun. We ought to try that. We went home. Uh, my son-in-law, myself, and a friend of ours built a barbecue pit. And that October, we attended our first event. Didn't have any idea what we were doing. Won a little trophy, and we were hooked. And we've, we've been cooking since 1985. This, this is the start of my 28th year competing in the barbecue contest. Uh, I've done uh, more in Texas than any other place. We've traveled all over the state of Texas, but I've done Kansas City cook-offs from uh, Arizona, Colorado, all the way to Alabama and Georgia. The, the biggest part of, of barbecue to me now is the people you meet. We've, we've made so many lasting friends over the last 28 years. and. I enjoy seeing people go different places. You see people live in different areas. And I'm starting to get too old to have to get up and stay up at night and watch fire. But it's still, I still enjoy it. And I'll probably continue to do it. Maybe not as much as I've done it in past years and everything. Probably can continue to do it and everything. IBCA started in 1989. There were nine cookers that got together and with the idea that we were going to create an organization and some rules that would make it fair for the cookers. At the time, there was uh, one barbecue association. They didn't really have set rules. So we spent a year uh, laying down the, the groundwork, putting down some rules that we thought were fair to the cooks. In 1990, 
we opened up the organization to membership. Uh, we now probably have an excess, but somewhere between seven, eight hundred members. Uh, last year, I think we sanctioned somewhere in the neighbor of, neighborhood of uh, 130 cook-offs from uh, Mississippi to Hilo, Hawaii. Uh, I belong to, I, no, I did not go to Hilo. I, uh, yes, yes, he's helped us, Cliff has helped us uh, a lot over at uh, that event over there. We uh, I also belong to the Kansas City Barbecue Association, have been a member of that organization since 1990. Uh, don't compete in their cook-offs as much as I used to. I used to try to do at least a couple a year. Uh, the rules are totally different as far as the judging goes. Still enjoy both of them. Uh, also went through a, a time and everything, uh, was a member of the National Barbecue Association, uh, attended convention trade shows all over from uh, from Florida, to Alabama, South Carolina, Kansas City, Memphis, Houston. Uh, met a lot of nice people there, a lot of contacts. Bill, Bill Milroy was still around in the days that they had a we had a trophy for dead ass last, and pe kept it for a long time. The, we uh, there was a couple that won the thing. They put together they took a bunch of old trophies and put together a trophy that was probably seven foot tall, and and when you saw them coming with that trophy and everything, boy, you, I mean you dug in tried to do what best you could do and everything that day because you didn't want to go home with that trophy, but. Uh, it, the the whole thing has changed so much over the last 20 something years and everything. It's just unbelievable. The uh, television, uh, all the uh, literature that you can read, magazines, newspapers and everything have really pushed this and everything. And I mean, it's it's gone from, from something that you said a barbecue cook off 25 years ago, most people wouldn't know what you're talking about. And now you go to events, you have people that have read about it and seen it on television, and they come out just to see what one's like. And you meet you meet a lot of people that are not involved in it, just interested in it, coming out and everything. And most of the cooks will answer all the questions that they have. If, you know, they don't understand something, how it works and everything. They're more than welcome to come out and ask the cooks. And you, sometimes you get straight answers, sometimes you don't. But, well, Came out here today with old Johnny Trigg. Had some pretty good barbecue. We'll we'll find out here in a couple of hours and everything did any good or not. And then we'll take the long trek back to Texas. Everybody needs to get out, visit, enjoy this, see what it's all about. Barbecue and bring it all the way up to here. Actually, I got barbecue involved in barbecue originally in 1979. I uh, opened a restaurant in Scottsdale, Arizona, a barbecue restaurant, and uh, we started in, in June of 79. Uh, we heard about, uh, there was a contest in Scottsdale, a uh, barbecue contest in North Scottsdale, and uh, I decided to try to compete, and uh, uh, it was our first time I ever competed, and I placed first uh, that, at that time in the barbecue contest. It was strictly restaurants that were competing, so we were lucky enough to get first place. Uh, and after that, we had a few articles in the paper and uh, we uh, started getting a little busier. So uh, uh, we heard about a contest in Memphis, Tennessee called Memphis in May in 1980. And uh, I, I, when I flew to Memphis and built my own smoker and uh, did a whole hog and I placed uh, third out of 200 in uh, 1980. And then I did a few contests after that in between uh, and I placed first and second at a grand champion, uh, uh, mostly back around Memphis and that, those areas because that's where the competition had started. And then 81, I went back to Memphis again and I placed third again in uh, pork shoulder this time. Uh, and I just kept continuing to do contests. I kept winning and so I kept doing it. Uh, and I think uh, I haven't missed a year where I've done at least one. Uh, I, I do try to be continuous to do at least one a year, but 
we have two restaurants now, so in the summer I'm really limited to where I can go. But uh, generally try to do at least one. Sometimes I'll get four or five in. It just depends on how the year is going. And that leads us up to today. Right now we're just doing this contest in Phoenix. Uh, and uh, we're, we, uh, in Arizona, we're open all year, but our, our restaurant in Colorado is open six months, so we have winners off there. Where do they find them? I'm sorry? Where do they find your restaurant? My restaurant in Colorado is in Silverton, which is north of Durango. And uh, here in Arizona, we're in Glendale, which is about 55th Avenue in Bell. Anything else? No, no, well, just uh, that barbecues changed a lot since the 70s. There's, uh, there's a lot more, uh, it's, it's more, uh, uh, I guess back in the 70s and 80s, it was all basic barbecue. Everything was natural, and, and you did stuff. You had a 10 by 10 area, and that's how you cooked your, your entries. And you, everything you used was either wood or charcoal, and you didn't have any kind of injections or marinades or not, not so much in rubs even. You, you mostly just seasoned your meats and smoked them. Now it's changed so much because you have it's a lot more scientific than it was year, years ago. There's a lot more thought pattern into it and a lot more ways to give meat the flavor that uh, the judges want. So it's just evolved so much more from what it was in the 70s. And the, the competition is a lot stiffer than it was back then because people really study the techniques of barbecue and, and different ways that they can get a final product that is an out, outstanding product. <laughs> a very nice um, piece of meat, um, very balanced flavors, um, very moist. Number two was a nice piece of meat also, except for there is this big huge piece of fat right here that, but it's skin, but it just looked undesirable and I chose to eat from this side of the chicken because that just didn't look very appetizing. This is a very different piece of meat. Um, this bone sticking out looked unnatural to me. It looked um, not desirable. And so it's just kind of um, strange looking. It doesn't look like a piece of chicken. I mean, it is, but it looks weird. Um, these two were probably my favorites. Um, the skin was nice. The um, moisture was nice. The, ba the flavor was very balanced. Nothing, um, no flavor sticking out really strong. This one here, the skin was real rubbery and um, kind of fell off. Um, it tasted good, but the um, um, the the skin was not as nice as the other um, pieces of meat. Okay, um, you want just just my discussion of the. Okay, you want me to do them all? Okay, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I not I can't you know I can't remember all the details of all of them. Um, I can say that uh, there's a little bit of an off spice flavor in number two that I wasn't too wild about. Um, my uh, number number four was just a little bit drier than I would have liked. Uh, I think my favorite was number five. I think I gave it the highest marks. Um, <clears throat> they all were pretty good, but uh, some were a little better than others, and uh, it's a little bit of. Uh, one or two of them, I think number three was just maybe a little bit drier than I would have liked. Okay. Well, I always want to say thank you to all of the people who come and cook. It's a lot of work and a lot of expense for you. Um, I thought all of them were really good on tenderness and the flavors varied a lot depending on what seasoning they use, but I tried to base it on you know, overall. 
There was one that was a little bit uh, drier, probably a little overcooked. But overall, I think they were quite w good. Um, I felt that <coughs> the appearance was good on um, all of them, um, a little better on uh, the last two. Um, tenderness, taste was very good, um, but um, it was um, the third one that was a little not quite as moist. Yes, I am. Um on number one, my skin was very tough on that. Um, other than that, it was good. Number two had an aftertaste that I couldn't quite put my hand around, figure out. Uh, but other than that, it was tender enough. Number three was dry, and mine did not have any taste. Um, it was an, it was what I would call very average. My favorite was number five. I thought the taste, the tenderness, and everything on it was very good. Um, and number six had very tough skin. That's about it. I agree with the consensus of most uh, everybody at the table. They were all presented pretty well. Uh, the most uh, flavorful and tenderest was our number five entry with uh, number six. I had a good flavor, but uh, the skin was not quite done uh, properly and it pulled, uh, you couldn't bite through that. And number four was probably my third best on this. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure to go. After 18 contests, I finally found a piece of meat I wanted to spit out. Uh, just pretty uh, dry and just a horrible taste. Uh, number two actually had some uh, okay flavor, but uh, there was a membrane and uh, was very tough. Uh, and number three was pretty much the same. Number four was actually uh, very tasty, but uh, a little bit overcooked. It fell right off the bone. And Number five, um, also very tough, but uh, had some okay flavor. Okay. Uh, <coughs> number one, rib number one was uh, exceptionally dry um, with very little flavor. Uh, rib number two um, was an okay flavor. Uh, but it was ex uh, very difficult to pull the meat off the bone. Um, number three, again, an okay flavor, uh, but that one had the membrane fully intact and therefore was also very difficult to pull off the bone. Number four, very nice sweet flavor, a little bit overcooked as the meat came right off the bone. Uh, rib number five, uh, had the best texture of the bunch, just about right, um, but uh, a little bit on the bland side. The flavor was just okay. Okay, on the, the number one rib, it wasn't very tender. It, it was uh, dry, and it didn't have too good of a taste. Uh, number two, it, it was uh, it was very tender, and it had a good taste to it. Number uh, three was tender and it had a good taste. Uh, number four was uh, tender, but the taste wasn't, it was different, it wasn't too good. And number five, it wasn't very tender and it didn't have a very good taste. 
Uh, number one, extremely dry. Uh, number two was also tough, and I thought it was pretty spicy hot. Number three was tough, and what you could not get it off the bone. Uh, number four was pretty tasty, but I felt it was overcooked. And number five, I thought was probably the best of the bunch. You can keep your computer in the game and some of the games on your website. For free information, call now. 1 800 933 What's the time, Tommy? Um, Yeah. I learned a lesson. Let me tell you another lesson. Yeah, what's the other one? The other lesson is when you're when you're heating up sauce, don't put it in a metal pan on this burner. You know why, Paul? Why? Because it burns a hole right through the bottom of the pan and all your sauce leaks all over the ground. Okay. Well yeah, I wouldn't put it on a high temp in there. Yeah, I don't think I had it on a high temp, but yeah, that's that's what happened. I'm just hypothetically speaking, that could be what happened. I liked uh, I liked one. Uh, it was uh, well cooked. The um, flavor also was not. Uh, it was a mild flavor, so I wasn't impressed with the flavor. Uh, number two was uh, a little chewy, had a very heavy smoke flavor to it. Number three uh, was just an, an average uh, pulled pork for me. Number four. Uh, unfortunately, I got a real fatty piece, uh, and uh, the burn end was crisp and hard. And uh, five, I think, personally, was the best one of the bunch. It was uh, well cooked. Uh, flavor was a little on the mild side, but it was well cooked. Okay, number one, I thought was it was good and tender. It was just a little bit devoid of flavor. I think it could add a little more flavor. Number, number 221. Okay. Number two was just a little bit, well, it was tough to me. And it was void of flavor as well. Number three was, was good, it was just an average thing, I, I thought. Uh, four, I thought, was uh, was good and tender. And the flavor with it had a sweet flavor, which is fine. Uh, number five, I liked the best. It was more stuff. I thought it was more tender. It had a good smoke through there, and uh, it was really flavorful. Number one, I liked uh, the tenderness of it. There was something in the sauce, like a juice of some sort, that was a little overpowering on the taste. Um, to my preference. Number two was the cooking. It was pretty dry and the outer bark part was very um, too much. Um, number three was nicely cooked. Um, had nice flavor. I would have liked to have a little bit more pronounced flavor on it. Uh, number three was a little bit dry. Um, it had a nice taste to it though. Number four was my favorite. Um, nicely cooked, 
Uh, the money muscle was a little overdone, falling apart, but it was right there, very close. Also had nice flavoring. Number one was a great entry. It had great color. It was cooked well. Um, it had various pieces of the of the turn-in options. Number two was definitely different. It was um, wasn't vinegary, but it had a little bit of a sour flavor, and it was dry, unfortunately. Number three was also a nice entry. It was it was cooked relatively well. It could have used a little bit more seasoning or flavoring on it. Number four, they did it great. It was a beautiful color, it, beautiful glaze on it. It was a nice burnt ends. They did a nice job. Uh, number five, I think, was the best. As you can tell, because there's nothing left hardly of number five. <laughs> they, they had a nice money muscle on that one. It was tender. It was cooked well. It was not overcooked. It was it a was very nice piece. Number one was unbelievable. It was very moist, very tender, had a great flavor. Number two could bounce off uh, rock. It was hard. It was very dry. No flavor at all. Number three was adequate. A little salty. Number four was very strange. It had a vinegary taste and uh, not smoked well. Number five was unbelievable and the consensus of everyone at our table I think was the best. Burn ends were very good and just the way it should be. These are big boys. Number one, I had a little bit of trouble pulling apart. I thought it was uh, somewhat tough. It's also confusing when you get a piece of brisket and you get the burnt end. What do you judge? Do you judge the brisket or the burnt end or both? I don't know. I try to mainly concentrate on the brisket. Um, after the first one, most of them pulled apart pretty well, so they were okay as far as tenderness. I thought the fifth one picked up a little more flavor. He didn't sauce it up. He mainly used the, uh, the bark on the outside for the flavor. And I thought that one picked up a little more of the smoky taste. So I probably like that the best. Much like the previous judge, I had a trouble with a couple of them pulling them apart. Um, the second one was rather bland flavor-wise, except for the sauce they had actually put on the burnt end. I judged both the burnt ends and the, the brisket itself. The, the fourth piece of meat over here I thought was the best of the five we got the sample. It had some good flavor. It had very, it was very tender. The fifth one had excellent bark on it. It was rather thick and my piece did fall apart when I picked it up and tried to chew it. The first one, uh, like the others have said, was rather tough. Uh, it did not pull apart right. Uh, there was a lot of blandness in here, but the fifth one was probably the best flavor-wise. The only problem with the fifth one was, was that the, uh, the, uh, the way it looked uh, with too much fat going through it, a large string of fat going through it, it doesn't lo didn't look as appealing as some of the others. Thank you. Yes, I thought uh, the sample number one was a little undercooked. It was fairly tough pulling it apart. Uh, two, three, and four I, uh, were all cooked very well. I thought the, the fifth one was a little bit overcooked on, on the piece that I got. As far as the, the flavors go, I, I thought number four and five had the, had the best flavor. Uh, number one was kind of bland, and the, the third one had a, a little bit of a, of a different flavor that I wasn't really expecting. I'm not quite sure exactly what, what that was. Um, so that's it. Okay, number one, it was uh, kind of tough. Didn't have a whole lot of flavor. 
number two was a little bit better, a uh, little bit more flavor. Number three, I didn't find any flavor in it. Uh, it was probably the least of my pick in the whole plate. Four and five were good. They just, one of them was, uh, well, five was overcooked. The scores were pretty consistent throughout the table. Um, I thought one was very salty uh, and five was overcooked and uh, mushy. Uh, the other three were okay. <laughs> Yeah.